Hello students, welcome to Hari Chemistry. So, if you like my videos, so please subscribe my channel and please press the bell icon and you will receive the new updates or new notification to your mail. So, thank you. So, the topic is uh, discovery of uh, proton or anode ray tube experiment. Okay, clear student. So, here uh, the discovery of a proton or anode tube ray experiment is similar to the DJ Thompson cathode ray tube experiment. Okay, so the cathode ray tube experiment, JJ Thompson he discovered the fundamental particle in an atom, so which is carries negatively charged particle. So these negatively charged particle we are calling as electron. So here, so according to the John Dalton's atomic model. In 1808. So, according to this John Dalton atomic model, the atom is neutral in matter. So, but in J.J. Thompson experiment, the atom is contains some fundamental particles. So, these particles is carries negatively charged particle. If atom will be neutral, so the fundamental particle is electrons are negatively charged particle. So therefore, atom will be left some the amount of equivalent amount of some positively charged particles will be left over in the atom. So due to this concept, many of the scientists was uh, were uh, scientists were do the do the experiments in various areas uh, at the end. So. E. Goldstein was successfully discovered the discovery of a proton in anode ray tube experiment. Okay, clear? So, here, so in this anode ray tube experiment, it is similar to the J.J. Thompson cathode ray tube experiment. So, here the change is in that J.J. Thompson cathode ray tube experiment, so he used anode material. So, here the anode is a perforated anode. But here in this case, the discovery of proton, the E. Goldstein was chosen here, it is a cathode is a perforated material. So, the cathode is the perforated material. So, and also here, the connectivity of uh, these two metallic electrode plates are reversed to the J.J. Thompson uh, discovery of uh, electron. Okay, here, so this is anode and uh, this is cathode. Remember student, so this cathode is a perforated cathode material and here so this tube is connected through a, a vacuum pump so we can evacuate it if any gases will be present in that discharge tube and also we can introduce any type of gas we are going to be studying okay so these anode having positively charged a uh, positive electrode and the cathode is negative electrode so these electrodes are connected through a high voltage that is we are applying 10,000 volts potential we are applying and also here we are going to study the gases at low pressure conditions okay here so at the back of the cathode uh, cathode plate so here we have coated with the, the phosphorant material like here we are using zinc sulfide material okay so clear student right here Already we know the J.J. Thompson experiment. So, the cathode rays are originated from cathode. Okay, clear. So, according to the J.J. Thompson uh, uh, discharge tube experiment, so the electrons are originated from cathode and travels from cathode to anode. So, it's clear student, right? Here also, the same thing here. So, when we are applying high voltage current, so here, so the electrons are originated from this cathode material. So these are the electrons are originated from cathode material. So these are the electron that is the source of electron from cathode material. So these electrons are travels in the direction of anodic plate. So here this is the direction of electrons from cathode to anodes. Clear. So these electrons are traveled in the direction of cathode to anode here so the gas atoms is present in this discharge tube so these are the gases atoms are present in the discharge tube so if these electrons are collide with this 
gases atoms okay so these electron is that clear student so these electrons are collide with the gases atoms for example uh, let us say a is the atom so this atom is collide with the electron and so these gases atoms uh, lost electrons and produce uh, the positively charged ion in this uh, discharged particles which are comes from this uh, gases atom so this gases atoms uh, ionize them so and here when these electrons are scattered with this uh, neutral gases atom so these gases atoms are ionized and lost electrons and it produce positive particles so here so we can conclude that so here so these are these rays these rays these rays these rays are having these rays are having positively charged particle these rays are having positive charge so these rays are having positive charge okay so similarly the many of electrons which comes from this uh, cathode material and scattered with this uh, gases atoms the neutral gases atoms and uh, liberates positive charged ions and uh, so negligible mass of an electron produced so these positively charged ions these positively charged uh, ions are travels towards the direction of uh, cathode these positively charged ions moves towards the direction of cathode which is completely reverse to the jj thomson experiment okay so in that case so in the jj thomson experiment the cathode rays are travels towards the uh, cathode to anode but here so these anode particles are moves towards the anode to cathode okay so these rays these rays we can called as uh, these rays we can call these rays we can called as uh, called as anode rays anode rays or we can called as uh, canal rays canal rays so these canal rays travels these canal rays uh, travels towards towards uh, anode 2 anode 2 cathode so here the direction is uh, reverse to the jj thomson experiment in this jj thomson experiment the electrons are travel towards the cathode to anode material but here so these positively charged particles are moves towards the anode to cathode clear student right here and here so when this uh, these positively charged particles are uh, moves towards the perforated cathode material and uh, so these cathode these positively charged particle strike the zinc sulfide screen which is a uh, back side of the cathode plate and here when this when these positively charged particles strike the zinc sulfide screen so zinc sulfide will be the zinc sulfide screen will be uh, glow so due to this uh, uh, glow so we can conclude that so these positively charged particles are moves towards the anode to cathode direction clear and also here we can conclude that so the charge of these particles are positive or negative so we can conclude that already we know so the positive charged particle but we can explain so based on the applying of electric field strength so here it is we are applying field strength so here also electric field strength so this is the polarity is a positive and negative student so here so when we are applying the strength of electric field so these positively charged particles are moves toward moves from this perforated cathode material and bends are deflected towards the negative field strength side so here so here these positively charged particle are deflected towards the negative field strength so based on this uh, the deflection of uh, uh, electric field so by we can conclude that so these uh, positive these particles carries positively charged particles so here these cathode rays uh, sorry anode rays uh, anode rays anode rays are canal rays canal rays deflected deflected 
in presence of deflected in presence of electric field in presence of electric field and magnetic field so here also when we stop the electric field here we are applying some magnetic field strength so this is the magnetic field strength we are applying so these positively charged particles are moves from the perforated cathode material so these positively charged particle so deflected towards the magnetic field strengths of the south pole side so here so based on this uh, uh, concept so we can conclude that so these uh, anode rays or ca canal rays uh, carries a positively charged and also here so these fields strengths electric field and magnetic field strengths are which is completely opposite to each other so here one more thing that is the electrons which are travel which are collides with this here and these electrons are travel towards the anode direction and here so the electrons are deposit at anodic plate okay clear student right here so and also the e goldstein was concludes that so these the mass of these uh, uh, gases atoms which are present in the discharge tube the charge to mass ratio is uh, differs from one gas to another gas so here the means here uh, all gases are not having the uh, equal amount of charge to mass ratio but one gas uh, charge to mass ratio is not similar to the another gas for example here we, we are taking hydrogen gas inside the tube so these hydrogen gas atoms are strike these electrons and liberates h plus particle so the hydrogen with a positive charge so these hydrogen positive charge we can called as protons so the positive charge of this hydrogen we can called as protons which are comes from the hydrogen gas so the name of h plus is equal to protons was given by rutherford so the name of proton suggested by rutherford the name of proton was suggested by uh, rutherford but the discovery of proton was done by eugen goldstein eugen goldstein so the discovery of proton was done by goldstein but the name of the proton was suggested by rutherford scientist okay so here uh and also he calculate the charge of this uh, positively charged particle is equal to uh, plus 1.6 into 10 to the power of uh, minus 19 coulombs so which is uh, similar to the charge of electron but only the change in the sign and also he successfully calculated the charge to mass ratio charge to mass ratio of a proton so remember student so the charge to mass ratio is depend upon the the nature of gas uh, uh, which is present in the inside the discharge tube all gases are not having the similar charge to mass ratio that is uh, very very important so here the charge to mass ratio is depend upon the nature of gas which is present in the inside of the discharge tube so he calculated the charge to mass ratio of a proton that is equal to 9.58 into 10 to the power of 7 coulomb per kg or so 9.58 into 10 to the power of 4 coulomb per gram so this is the charge to mass ratio of proton and also he concludes that the uh, the uh, mass of proton the mass of proton is equal to 1.672 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg r r that is 1.67 into 2 into 10 to the power of minus 24 gram so here we can care we can get the value of mass of proton that is equal to the charge of proton divided by charge to mass ratio of proton so that is equal to we will get the value 1.672 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg or 10 to the power of minus 24 gram okay clear student and also he concludes that the uh, mass of proton is uh, 1 by 1837 uh, uh, heavier than the mass of electron so here 
the mass of proton is 1 by 1837 part is heavier than the mass of electron. So, this is the discovery of a proton or we can call it as anode ray tube experiment was done by Eugen Goldstein and the name of proton was suggested by Rutherford scientist. Okay, clear student, right? So, these rays means these rays are having positive charge and these rays we can call it as anode rays or we can call it as a canal rays. So, these canal rays travels towards the anode to cathode side. So, which is completely opposite to the direction of electrons and these anode rays or canal rays deflected in the presence of electric field and also magnetic field and also it affect the photographic plate also that is very very important. And also when we take the uh, inside the discharge tube with hydrogen gas so these hydrogen atom is collides with the uh, electrons which are comes from the cathode material so then here these hydrogen atom so ionize and it produce H plus ions so these H plus ions uh, we can call it as a proton the name of proton was suggested by Rutherford in 1919 so here it its uh, electron with a negligible mass clear student right and also he calculates the charge of the proton is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs uh, which is similar to the uh, charge of electron but only the change in the psi and also he successfully calculated the charge to mass ratio of proton is equal to 9.58 into 10 to the power of 7 coulomb per kg or 9.58 into 10 to the power of 4 coulomb per gram. So, the one important thing he concludes that the charge to mass ratio uh, is depends upon the, the charge to mass ratio is depend upon the nature of gas present in the inside of, in, inside of the discharge tube that is very very important because uh, he used different types of gases. So, the gas, the charge to mass ratio of gases atoms are differ from one gas to another gas. So, he concludes that. So, the charge to mass ratio uh, depends upon the nature of the gas student. Okay, clear student. And also, we can calculate the mass of proton that is equal to charge of proton divided by charge to mass ratio of proton. So, that gives 1.672 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kilogram or 1.672 into 10 to the power of minus 24 gram and also he concludes that the mass of proton is 1 by 1837 times heavier than the mass of electron. So, this is the discovery of a proton student. So, if you like my video, so please subscribe my channel. Thank you. So, discovery of a neutron. Okay. So, neutron was was discovered by discovered by James Chadwick in 1932 the neutron was discovered by James Chadwick in 1932 so the neutron is electrically neutral so neutron is electrically neutral it is he found that so the new particle which is present in the atom so it is electrically neutral that means the charge is zero the charge is zero so here it carries a zero charge okay so he found the neutron when he discovered the thin beryllium sheet is bombarded with the alpha particle so 2HE4, so he found the, the new particle which is emit when the beryllium thin sheet was bombarded with the alpha particle. So he found the new particle so which is called as a, a neutron and also we get uh, the C612. So this is a neutron. So the neutron was discovered by James Hardwick in 1932. Okay, clear student, right? So here the mass of the mass of neutron the mass of neutron 
slightly higher than the mass of proton so that is 1.675 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg or 1.675 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams so here so uh, when we look at the mass of proton that is equal to 1.672 into 10 to the power of minus 27 here so the mass of uh, neutron is uh, 1.675 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kilogram or 6.75 into 10 to the power of minus 24 gram so this is uh, uh, regarding to the uh, neutron okay clear student